Hey everybody, welcome back. So, uh, in this video, I'm gonna show you guys the testing protocol of the console. So we are gonna use the signal generator in the master section of the console just to show you how to send noise to each channel and each of the subgroups. So uh, let's check it out. Okay, so this is another ultimate swag moment as far as analog technology that is 20 years old goes. Um, so the console has a signal generator built into it uh, that allows you to send test frequencies of, of various sounds uh, to various places of the console. So um, if you want to listen to your sub matrix or listen to individual channels through the PA system to make sure that everything's plugged in correctly or just check some levels uh, as far as, as in out goes, you have a built-in signal generator. So. Um, the sounds that it makes are, are pink noise, uh, you have a 1K test tone, or you have a sweepable test tone from 50 hertz to 5K, and then this is the volume level for that. And then these two little yellow buttons right here just decide where that goes. So if we're using the internal generator, that uses this. Or if you'd like to use a, an external generator, like say you're running Smart or something like that, you can just click that and that listens to the XLR input on the back. Um, moving further down the talk section, uh, this is your, your God mic right here. Um, so if you'd like to use or activate this, this input, you have a gain because of course Midas, excuse me, Midas allows you to have some saturation even on your God mic and uh, here's your level which would essentially be the fader. Um, and then these two buttons right here will tell you where you would like it to go. So if you want everything to go to your internal talk structure, you can click that button, or if you'd like to go to an external XLR to maybe a monitor console or a shout system, that's, that's what that guy does. So from a test mode on the console, um, I'm gonna show you guys a little trick that I didn't know existed, but again, shout out to Jim, the Midas tech, for telling me this on one of my first uh, calls with him. Let me see if we can get this just right. Now, if you look, Right here, there's a little blue button. And when you click that button, that puts the channel into test mode. And what test mode means on this console is, should you want to send pink noise to a specific channel, for example, channel 25, which is where I have it sending right now, um, you can. So let's, let's send it. So the way that we do that is we click the generator internal that makes us listen and actually I have this set up to my PA system in my shop so um, we're going to click our generator internal and let's say we want pink noise so select that and you can see that we have pink noise going through channel 25 so I have the direct output of channel 25 into my sound system my testing PA system in my shop so there's our pink noise so if we want to listen to, say, 1K, ooh, what a sweet sound that is. But if you want to listen to sub frequencies or do a sweep, we have that. Um, the other thing that the test function will do is, say you don't want to listen to um, a sine wave, you can use this talk input right here. So where it says talk to all internal, you can plug a microphone or, um, any type of line level source material in into there, and then that will play also. All you have to do is say, talk to all internal. Um, and because YouTube will not allow me to play music, I can't really show you that, but um, I, I can show you some of the cool testing protocols that you can do with consoles. So um, we take that off. So let's, let's listen to pink noise. So we've got pink noise going right here. We're gonna use our internal. Now let's, turn that off we're just going to take our direct our direct output and take that off but let's look at say our matrix groups okay there's matrix one two there's three four so you can see whereas if you're teching a pa system you can just send things to all of your outputs just to make sure that your systems guy plugged everything in correctly and this follows to everything so if you say, for example, I want to check the master section, that brings that up. And let's bring our auxes up. Oh, there's some meters. 
So let's just bring this up. Oh, there's, oh, and there's some more. Oh yeah. So there are all of our masters. These are our groups. These are all of our aux masters and our matrices that are now showing signal at all of our output buses. Um, also combined with channel 25, which has our little dip switch uh, connected into it. Um, so if we want to kill that, we can just shut that off. Boom, they all go away. Um, so that's, that's how we test the channel and listen, and listen to uh, everything in the console just from a, a testing standpoint using the internal generator. Um, I went through everything and it all sounds pretty good. So uh, I think that this is the time when we can start pulling the console apart. So here we go. Okay, so looking at the back of the console, each channel is secured via three screws. So I pulled another channel out just to give a little bit better visual. So um, each um, in the chassis, these each have these little uh, captive nuts that are in here. So the back, so all the screws have a T20 um, Torx size, and they look like this. Um, so there are two of these screws. There's one that's right here. And then there's another one at the back of each channel, which if you remember from the last video, or if you haven't seen it, uh, we pulled off the little light cover. So there's a uh, link to that right uh, there. Um, and then at the base of each channel, they have a tapered screw. So they're still using... Um, a little cage nut there, but they have a tapered screw that looks like this. So leave it to Midas to have uh, <laughs> two of uh, two of the three screws be different. So um, I've just got little espresso cups going that just says channel base and channel back. So um, before we start pulling the channels, I'm just going to run along the back of the console and take all the screws out. Um, and then once all the screws are out of everything, we'll start pulling the cards. So here we go. So we've got all the screws removed from the top and bottom of each channel. And then we've got everything labeled. So all the channels are labeled in their uh, original spot. And I'm going to try to keep these as close to where they go. I, I, I still want to move some of the stereo channels around. I'd love to have a stereo channel up top. Um, just for um, drum overheads, and I want to move one into the channel 25 position uh, for a DAW return, but I don't know if I'm going to do that or not, but we shall see. Um, so we're going to start pulling the channels. <laughs>
Okay, so here's 25 through 48 pulled. Um, so let's zoom in here and see what's going on. So these are the cards. And then these are all the ribbon cables, which again, if you're if you're watching any of these videos, I feel like you uh you might be um maybe you're a, I I mean this is not an offensive term, but in the nerdier persuasion, so I feel like this is the stuff that I really want to show everybody because I'm discovering this right along with you. And just Midas has a very beautiful way of keeping everything really neat. I mean, I guess if you're going to spend almost 80 grand on a console, um, it, it should should damn well be pretty inside, but it really is. Um, so here's all the ribbon, ribbon routing um, for the faders. And then as far as dirt goes, it's not so bad. There's dirt, but it's not all those little specks that you see down there. That's all just dust. And my hands are pretty dirty from pulling all those modules out. There's a little bit of corrosion on them. Um, but but nothing nothing terrible. I'm gonna try to just shut up and not talk so much over everything, but here's what we've got going on. With this all pulled out, here's all the modules stacked up, which is pretty cool <laughs> just to see. And that's only 24. Um, I still have the other side of the console to do, and that's... I don't have any place to put them. <laughs> so I need to get another shop card in here to put the other modules on there just to see. But again, just as a backed up look of the way it, of, of what it all looks like. Um, so here's what's, I'm trying to go right to left with this console just as far as taking everything apart. But um, I'm gonna try to get in here so you can see. Um, oops, that's down. Um, the, uh, the master section has these support pieces right here, these guys. Um, and they actually are secured by, let's see if I can reach over this thing and show you. They're actually secured by uh, some of those press nut brackets. So I thought that I could pop that off, which is pretty crazy that they have the um, these press nut brackets right here that are screwed in from the other side. And then they also have the same screw holes as the channel faders. So those things are really in there. Now, one of them fell um, while I was while I was pulling everything out, which is this guy right here. So um, I tried to see if I could, oops, I was tried to see if I could, this guy right here, I tried to see if I could very gently uh, pull him out, but he's, he's in there pretty good. So um, I'm gonna pull the uh, master and the monitor section with the matrices out next. Um, from, from first blush, uh, these guys right here, um, are going to, I'm probably going to leave them in just to keep everything, uh, secured. But now that I'm looking at it, I think if these screws come out, that little angle bracket will come out too. And that'll, that'll come out. So we'll see. Um, I'm going to save the master section and the, uh, channels one through, uh, 24 for another video. I think we're getting a little long on this. I don't want to kill you guys with some 20 minute videos, but, uh, thanks for stopping by and, uh, I will post or we'll work on the, uh, the other videos as we go.